In this video, you are going to learn how to install a PVC or plastic septic tank from start to finish. This type of septic tank is better because it's very easy to install. It's cheaper compared to concrete tanks and can be used in hilly areas where concrete septic tanks are impossible to build. These plastic septic tanks are ideal for temporary systems, for example in camps. They are also good because of their fast installation process. Let's first clearly understand what a plastic septic tank means. A plastic septic tank is a sewage treatment system made from PVC plastic. These septic tanks are designed to collect sewage and wastewater from houses and treat it back into the groundwater system. How does a PVC or plastic septic tank work? This kind of septic tank usually has two chambers, the first chamber and the second chamber with a separating wall in the middle. One of the chambers is usually two thirds of its total length and the other chamber is usually a third. Meaning, let's say the total length of the septic tank is 3 meters. One of the chambers will be 2 meters and the other chamber will be 1 meter to make the total length here as 3 meters. The septic tank receives sewage through this inlet pipe. Once it reaches inside, it separates into 3 layers. Solid sewage at the bottom, liquid sewage in the middle and scum on top. Inside the septic tank, bacteria grows naturally to break down the solid sewage or sludge into liquid sewage and once the liquid sewage reaches this level, it flows the second chamber for further clearing and settling. Inside the second chamber, once the liquid sewage reaches the level of the outlet pipe, it flows the soak pit and then from the soak pit to the underground where it is treated by the soil layers back into the groundwater system. And the process continues like that every time you get rid of sewage or wastewater from your house. And right now, let me show you how we install a PVC or plastic septic tank from start to finish. Step 1 is to do site clearance and excavation and the trick here is that you excavate the pit based on the dimensions for the septic tank. Let's say that this septic tank is 3 meters along the length, 1.5 meters along the width and 1.7 meters height. When excavating its pit, we keep the length here as 3 meters. 1.5 meters width and then for the depth we add extra 200-300 millimeters while keeping in mind the required level of the pavers or the ground level to make the total height here as 1.9 or 2 meters. The major tip here is that when excavating this pit you don't have to add any allowances or gaps in the sides. Let me illustrate to you what happens when you leave gaps in the sides. In case water comes from below the tank or even in the sides. Even after backfilling, it will weaken the backfill and damage your plastic tank. Or else you might even find your plastic septic tank floating on top like a boat. And that's why this kind of excavating the sides is not good. It's always important to excavate while leaving no gaps in the sides as shown to keep the side walls strong enough to keep the septic tank intact in one place. Also excavate the pit for the soak way depending on the number of users. Here is a table to guide you when excavating the pit for the soak way. The second step is to place the septic tank inside the pit. To do this safely without damaging the septic tank, you have to use a pulley. Step 3 is filling the septic tank with water. Fill the septic tank with water immediately as soon as you place it in the pit to avoid folding. You can use a water pump or jerry cans to fill it with water. Filling the septic tank with water first will ensure that the septic tank sits very well in the pit firmly without getting out of position. Step 4 is backfilling. Backfill with imported maram. Start by backfilling at the four corners to avoid folding or damaging the septic tank and then backfill the middle part later. Step 5 is doing plumbing and this is the most important or most crucial step when working on any septic tank project. And the way we do this is also simple. Sewage from the toilet should be directed towards the inlet pipe of the septic tank. When you have different toilets in your house, you have to make them meet at this manhole at the inlet side. And then waste water from kitchens, bathrooms, air conditioning, washing machines or any other water from cleaning the house should be directed towards the soak way without passing through the chambers of the septic tank. It joins here at this manhole to connect the PVC taking liquid sewage to the soak way. Waste water with soap and fats should not enter the septic tank because it disrupts the bacterial action of breaking down the solid sewage into liquid sewage. 
hence making the septic tank need pumping all the time. Also be sure to include vent pipes within the plumbing system. These vent pipes help to keep the system fully aerated and also to keep the bacteria alive. When the bacteria in the septic tank is alive, it will break down the solid sewage into liquid sewage, which is able to soak away in the soak pit. In case you forget these two vent pipes, the septic tank will burst because of too much pressure inside. Also be sure to include a trap on every PVC pipe connecting the toilet, exiting the main building. They help to trap and stop bad odors in the septic tank from entering the main building. How do these traps work? When you flush water in your toilet, some of it remains trapped here, hence blocking smell from coming from the septic tank to the toilet. And the process continues like that every time you flush water from the toilet, hence keeping the building free from smell. When doing plumbing, ensure that the PVC pipe taking sewage from the toilet to the septic tank is slightly on a lower level than the PVC pipe for wastewater is at a slightly higher level. In simple terms, this PVC pipe at a low level carries sewage from the toilet only and is directed towards the inlet pipe of the septic tank. And then this PVC pipe on top here carries wastewater from the sink, bathtub, wash hand basin, bathrooms, and it joins to this manhole here at the outlet pipe to go to the soak pit. At the soak pit, you have to make sure that you organize the hard core properly in a way that it won't block wastewater from flowing freely. Make sure you leave a gap or space at the extreme exit point of the pipe. Cover the soak pit with a DPM or roofing sheet. What is important is preventing running water from entering the soak way. Lastly, do landscaping around to ensure that running water doesn't come towards the septic tank. In summary, when installing a PVC or plastic septic tank, we follow these steps in order as shown below. The first step is excavate the pit where we shall place the PVC or plastic septic tank and also excavate the pit for the soak way. The second step is to place the septic tank in its pit. The third step is to fill the septic tank with water. The fourth step is do back filling. The fifth step is do plumbing and I hope you have learned how we do plumbing the correct way. And lastly, fill the soak way with hardcore and cover it and also do landscaping around the septic tank. That's all about how to install a PVC or plastic septic tank from start to finish. I hope you get something from it. Watch this next video about how to build a septic tank with reinforced columns and a mid-ring beam. Don't miss this out. Click on this video here on the right. Thank you so much for watching.